so the xbox developer direct it happened a few hours ago and now is the time to kind of you know get get talking about it let's um let's get it moving so here it is here's um here's my thing very first of all what i'm going to be doing in this video is i'm going to be ranking or rating the showing not the game itself okay for the most part i give you my high level thoughts i don't like the whole developer part of the developer direct i'm not a fan I'm not a fan of seeing these people coming out and talking to us. I think that's a huge waste of time. And I just do not like this format. I didn't like it last year. They improved it this year, but I, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I really am not. I don't want to see these developers talk to me. Um, Yeah, maybe talk to me after. Maybe release this part a bit more like a state of play or a Nintendo Direct. like, Or maybe have one figurehead, okay? Let's just kind of find a happy medium. Have one figurehead come out for 30 seconds, introduce a project. And then show me the game. After that, go and say, listen, if you want more information, hear from the developers, put like a 15 minute presentation on YouTube where the developers are walking you through the trailer and are giving you the full information and then a much deeper dive into the game. Maybe they only explain or expand upon the same ideas that were put in the actual trailer, but at least there's a separate component you know where they show you everything behind the studios behind the scenes the mocap facilities everything like that like that is interesting information and that should be provided to the gamer we, it's good to get insight into the gaming industry that is a positive thing but at this i know it's not a developer direct but these developers are not direct with the information okay so huge waste of time now what i'm going to be doing over here is i'm going to be ranking the showing of the game not the game itself okay because i think for the most part all of these games are going to end up better than what they showed us today okay because again the presentation style just did not work for me but you know let, let's get into it let's kind of see what we saw okay so sorry it's muted of course um because youtube and i i i've never had a video taken down but if i was to have one i'm not gonna i'm not gonna Bring it back <laughs> like i'm not going through that process okay so here we are we have this person talking and this is about oh i vowed i will say this the first showing was his best showing remember that trailer that looked amazing the second showing was completely abysmal just god awful this showing is somewhere in between I would say that this showing overall was like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. There are moments where it looks a little bit too much like Sea of Thieves, but then there's moments where it looks like they actually tried. Overall, like you look at this scene over here and it's like, this is nice. This is great. It's not amazing. It's not genre defining. It's not class leading, but it's like, yeah, I, I, can, I can enjoy being in this game world. And then there's other moments where you're like, hmm none of it is convincing you know like what okay so this is a previous game i was i was going to say so let's just move forward you see how to waste your time like when i look at this this isn't convincing to me so i think avad had a lot of these moments it had moments where you kind of see like a lot of passion a lot of talent a lot of craft having been put in and then they had other scenes that were just a lot more middle of the road you know so it was a hard one to gauge because at moments I was like, oh, I like that. And then other moments I was like, mm, I really don't like that. So one of the things that I truly do not like, because of course this is YouTube, it's a long form video. Like look at this environment. It's looking amazing, isn't it? Like this looks good. This looks genuinely good. It doesn't look great. There's moments like there's these things over here where these things look like they're bioluminescent, but you see that there's no light actually coming off of them. These are details that can be added later. Again, I am ranking the showing as it is. I'm not ranking what the game should be or it will be in the future. So let's just get that out of the way. Even these little criticisms, I am happy to just hold them back. I'm just pointing them out as they come to me. So point is, it looks good. I don't like this part. Stop talking to me. I don't know what your name is. I'm not going to remember it. You look good and everything. And I like the camera angle, by the way. I do like the presentation from a technical aspect. This is really good work. But aside from that, none of it means anything to me. Oh, this is the part I don't like. This whole first person part over here. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Look at this monster. Look at these hands. Look at these character models. They kind of look like something between the PS3 and the PS4. Or maybe like early generation PS4 games. It's It looks behind the, the times. And listen, I'm just going to say it. Third person 
is a much better, much more generous camera angle for most games. Like most games should just be third person if they're going to be 3D games. Because the third person camera allows your player character to do far more, especially with combat, um, than you can in first person. You take a look at um, God of War, for example. There are moves that you put up in God of War with the sound of like some of the kinetic movement, with some of the dynamism, with some of the just wild, you know, things going on around you that you can't do in, in first person camera. And the reason that the first person camera doesn't allow you to do that is number one, your field of view is a lot more restricted. You can't have as many enemies off screen actually doing things and attacking you because that just wouldn't feel fair to the player character because you could never see those attacks coming. Now you could kind of get away with it with like radars and sensors and arrows and things, but really then that would just be more and more UI elements coming in and distracting you from the fact that this is an immersive experience to, oh, look, it's a video game, the video game. So the first person camera is way more restrictive. In terms of player movement, you're restricted. In terms of how many enemies you can have off screen and how active those can be, you are restricted. In terms of um, kind of just keeping the player stable, even like your moveset, I feel like you're restricted in a lot of these things. Certain games do it well. They absolutely do. Certain games are best experienced as first person games, but there are inherent limitations that I just feel like most games will be better without. Another thing that the first person camera kind of forces you into is that it forces you to scrutinize the graphics and the art style and sort of the visual presentation that is in front of you in a way that you cannot escape it, you know, or at least a third person camera will allow you to escape that sort of presentation a lot more easily. So when you put up a game like this one, it just does not stand up to scrutiny. I'm sorry, but you see certain details here, they look good, but for the most part, I mean, look at this. This is not an art style that I am particularly interested in. Look at these guys, they don't stand up to scrutiny. Had the camera been pulled back, I wouldn't have to look at the, play, uh, the character models so much. I wouldn't have to look at the shadows so much. I wouldn't have to see all of the imperfections in my face as much. You know, whereas by comparison, if you take a look at um, Cyberpunk 2077, sorry, I don't have a trailer already loaded up, but Cyberpunk 2077 was able to get away with, you know, the first person mode because Night City is just gorgeous. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous game. Like from the first moment we ever saw those hype trailers to the new version with 2.0 and everything, it has always been a visual stunner. I think it should have been third person, but it gets away with being first person from a graphical and visual presentation standpoint because it is one of like the leading like marshals into the future of what gaming can be from a visual perspective. But this game most definitely is not. It's just it's just not doing what it needs to do. Uh, so with Avowed, I'm going to give this showing, I think I gave it a 6, maybe a 4 out of 10, maybe a 5 out of 10. Um, I look at a lot of this and I'm just not convinced. That combat looks simple. It doesn't look engaging. It doesn't look fun. It Sometimes it looks really bad. Other times it looks kind of like, okay, you try to do different things. So for example, there's a part where they do like a dual, um, they do like a dual one build. And I'm sorry, like, I've always been attracted to magic. Okay, all right, so let me, let me first make this point, right? So, since we are here, look at this. I, look at these ground textures. What is this? What are we seeing? There is literally no detail anywhere. Anywhere here. Again, my point is not that the game is going to look like this in its final form. My point is that in a third person camera, this lack of detail, these low resolution textures will be so much more forgivable because it just wouldn't be in your face enough. So I know that people always say like, oh, you know, PlayStation, they do the third person over the shoulder camera, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, it's a better camera angle. It's just better for 90% of the games than first person. It just is. Like some things are just better than others. And third person camera, is just generally better than first person camera. Again, certain exceptions aside. Okay, so in any case, uh, yeah, you, you deal with some pistols, you deal with, I think, uh, I was still gonna talk about wands that you can deal with, and 
I really like playing as a mage in, in games. So for me, if you create a fantasy um, in game of any sort, the whole point is to have magic. Like that is the one thing I can never do like here on earth. So for me, when people are like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm playing this fantasy RPG and I'm going to be a soldier or I'm going to be like a guy with a sword and a shield. I'm like, why? <laughs> you could be a mage. So, you know, what's better than a mage? Um... A mage with two wands, of course. Now, this these character models, oh, they look awful. This camera angle, awful. This feels a little bit like Skyrim, I guess. I think this is in the DNA. Uh, Fallout, I guess. Oh, and their voice actors for this part, oh, they were atrocious. These voice actors were terrible, terrible. This one wasn't too bad. But um, this guy was awful. But then the, the guy afterwards, like, she's like, oh, you can talk to this guy. Oh, this voice actor, dude. You could use a text to speech program and have the same level of impact pretty much. So they need to polish up the voice work. Hopefully this is just like a side character in a side quest that you only encounter once and it's not representative of what most of the game is going to be like. Again, I just want to say I'm ranking the showing. I'm not ranking what the game will be. I think at the end of the day, Ava has a potential to be a good 7 out of 10 game. I think so. I really do. I do. You know, so... That is fair enough, but this was not a 7 out of 10 showing, it was closer to a 4, you could argue up to a 6, but really that just depends on how generous you are. Okay, let's um, let's be enough with Avowed over here. Let's talk about Hellblade. Hellblade 2. Um, hmm. <sighs> Would it be too much to ask? For this game to show four minutes unedited, uncut, with combat scene, just give us the game. We have seen so many hair and makeup videos, we have seen so many mercap and technology videos, we have seen so many story overboard and overview and what she's going through but what we haven't seen is just uncut combat like be there or even the set piece why not why not a set piece like sure cool four or five minutes but make it real gameplay not like the last set piece that they did which felt incredibly on rails Show me like a just just something a lot more dynamic and let the game speak for itself. You have spoken enough for this game. You truly have. So I'm going to say that Hellblade is showing 4 out of 10. Because it did not deliver the one thing that other showings didn't. And that was just show me the combat. Show me the game being played. But I will say it was a lot better than the last showing. But that one was abysmal. That one was atrocious. That one was like a 2 out of 10. So... You know, I guess you, you can take it, you know, as you find it there. Okay, uh, let's kind of increase this over here. What are we going to do? Um, first, oh, let me say, first of all, oh, Melina, you, you're, you're great. Fantastic. Lovely person. Um, really love what you do. Uh, let's just keep going. The visual presentation of this game, much better than the last ones. I'm still not sure about some of the character models and everything like that. Uh, like this one over here, she doesn't seem like she has the same level of polish as Senua does. But hey, you know, it is what it is. It's a small team. Uh, the environment, the art direction. I think one thing that we would definitely feel playing this game is that these guys have committed to their vision. For better or for worse, right? And, and that's something I can respect. I truly can. I can truly respect the fact that they have plunged themselves into this project and they've tried to go as deep as they could go and they've tried to make it the best product that they imagined they could make it we may have differences of opinion as to should they have invested in this or or not but i truly like that that's another thing that i like about the last of us part two the last of us part two is so committed to the project in itself and you can see that same level of passion from senua's hellblade 2. I think this will be for many people a 9 or even a 10 out of 10. Like, I truly believe in this game's ability to deliver on the niche specialized promise or premise of the game. And again, we need games like this. We need games like Hellblade 2 
because it is so committed to being what it is. You know, when I look at The Last of Us Part 2, again, like it or not, it is so committed to being what it is. And that is a good thing. That is not always a thing that we would agree with, but it is a good thing. And I can respect that. I hate all of these guys talking. Like, honestly, show the game. But when I see moments like this, I'm like, yes, yes, this is this is part of what she's supposed to go through. Um, look at this mocap studio. Oh my gosh, stop talking. Then we have this combat and it looks simplistic. I'm sorry, the animation is are better than the first game, most definitely. But mm, it's not really doing anything for me gameplay wise. Let's just put it this way. Senua's Hellblade 2 is a game that I will come to for the experience of Senua. It was not a game that I will come to for the gameplay or the playing of Senua. That's basically it. Um, I think for me, it is truly a once once in a lifetime experience you know like i'm gonna i wanted to say one and done but one and done is so reductionist i don't want it to be that like it is meant to be an experience it's like a an art exhibition that's how i see hellblade it's like an art exhibition that you go to you have one amazing evening you wouldn't repeat it again but you are glad for the time that you spent and that's the best thing i can say about it this showing though was poor because they kept interrupting it with things that didn't matter like a bunch of developers talking over it or this where they're like hey look we have drone shots of iceland like come ah whatever visions of mana this is a square in his title i like this i like the little cheeky little moment that they had there in the transitions by the way i will say this right playstation has the symbols they have the sacred symbols you know marching ominously towards the camera and that's their style I like, I like Xbox's, you know, kind of like transitions as well. They've come up with a cool, it's more colorful, it's it, it's dynamic, it's friendly, it's, it can be surprising. I like those transitions that they have between the games. What I don't like again is this. Actually, okay, this first part, I don't mind. It's like, hey, welcome to this game. We are Square Enix. We are based in wherever they are based. You know, we are headquarters, wherever we are headquartered. We've been working on this game for however long. Here is a brief history of the game and what you can expect. That is actually cool. My problem is when that they keep talking throughout it. You know, so this very first part of the year, this beginning, I don't mind it because I've never really interacted with uh, this particular game series. So I actually kind of like it getting that. Okay. And then I like it up to this point. If at this point they had just kept showing the game and then they never went back to the developers, I would have been great. I would have been, that would have been fantastic. I would have rated this an eight or a nine showcase. But as you will see, they will come and they would rain it with somebody else. Now, in terms of this game, I'm going to be honest. I'm not the biggest JRPG fan. I'm truly not. So I'm not going to pretend over here that um, I'm somehow going to play these games once it comes on PlayStation and everything like that. No, 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 no. That is not what i'm about why are they walking in the street why are we saying this you know you know you get what i mean like it's a waste of time it's a waste of time look at this it's just it's weird um but yeah in any case i'm not going to be the one to say that i'm going to play this game necessarily i might play it but i'm probably not because i'm not i'm not that kind of gamer um but i will say it despite all of these useless interruptions from these developers that i do not care about and we never care about this game looks really good I really do. I think that this was one of the better showings. Um, you know, it, I think it's an 8 out of 10 showing because it showed you so much of the game. Like, you finish this uh, game showing. And for me, showing a game is about getting me to understand what this game is. Like, fully understand what this game is. Not that I'm going to know every single secret and surprises or know where the story is going to take me. But it's about like, hey, at the end of the day, do I get this game? Do I understand it? And at the you know, again, for this particular game, I do, I get it. So it was a good showing. It's a completely an 8 out of 10. And uh, yeah, I like it. So just kind of going back to it for like a few final moments over here, kind of taking a look. Yeah, over here, he shows you the previous designs. But you look at this point, look at the combat. Looks really great. Looks really dynamic. See how they keep interrupting it? Oh, it's, so, it's so frustrating, you know. But in any case, here we go. You know, you see the game world. You kind of see what you're getting yourself into and it's colorful it's bright it's definitely you know for a particular taste so i think my stream is not at the highest 
Oops. Uh, now, now I've made a whole. Now I've made a whole kerfuffle out of it. That's what I've done. Let me just kind of make sure that it's at 1080p. Australian internet. It is truly phenomenal, as you can tell. So while that thing decides to load up there, um, we can kind of talk between ourselves. Okay. What I was gonna say is that the game looks good. Um, it has a different. It has a definitely a distinct art style. It is what it is, and I can enjoy it for what that is. Wow, this this video is truly struggling. Normally my internet isn't even that bad, but um, hey, I guess this is the day for it. Okay, let's just move forward. Maybe the game they just had enough of this game and they just didn't want to get us there. So we're gonna move forward to our history untold. Now, out of all the developers, I like these ones. These ones felt the most natural. They felt like they were brimming with passion. They really felt like they truly cared about this game and they were trying to provide the people that play these types of games with a distinct experience. Um, yeah, there's interruptions everywhere. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know what's going on. I need to like reset my Wi-Fi router or something. Let me jump down to the normal 1080p. Um, but yeah, so we see our history untold. I really like this woman. You know, Michelle Menard, you did great on camera. You did fantastic. I still think they should have had a few less interruptions. But what I liked about these developers is that I truly felt their passion. It didn't feel as scripted. It didn't feel as forced. So I can appreciate that. So yeah, in terms of the game, I do not play sim strategy games or 4X games. I don't even know what the X's are about. Uh, I don't play these types of games, but what I like is what they presented it to me as. They presented it to me as a game that is trying to break the boundaries of the genre that it finds itself in. A little bit like a Baldur's Gate 3 of the strategy genre. You know, kind of like, hey, you know, like CRPGs, but here, look at Baldur's Gate 3. It's this CRPG that does everything the genre should do, and it goes way beyond what you thought it could ever do. And I think that's what they are aiming for, at least from what it sounds like. I can't judge the game, but I will say the showing for me was an 8 out of 10. And if they had just reduced how many of these interruptions they have by the developers, I think it would have been a 10 out of 10 showing. But at least I felt like their interruptions, though a little bit annoying, were full of passion and they were actually saying something interesting. They should have just done it as a voiceover. And just have one person, just have one person talk. I don't need six or seven different people talking. Like truly, uh, and and stop the slow people walking in the street or in the office. That's annoying. Indiana Jones. Uh, is this the last one? Yeah. Okay. So, Baby's First Uncharted. It looks like a PS3 level game. Um, PS3? Is it PS? Is that? Uh, is that? No. Hold on. It looks like a PS3 to PS4 game. It's a high res PlayStation Three. Um, that's what it looks like and um, <laughs> Okay, okay, can I'm just gonna let this play in the background because these guys are boring But can we have a conversation you are not you're, come, come here Indiana Jones is not that guy <laughs> Okay <laughs> like <laughs> People grew up with Indiana people grew up with Indy Indy has inspired so many kids You know Indy has just always been you know the guy you know Indy is that guy you know, Indiana Jones, you know, everybody loves Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, no, no, why are these Indiana Jones fans coming from, no, no, nobody loved Indiana Jones, I'm sorry, I know that it's like a big thing in America, I guess, but I'm not there, and I, I do not care for it, the last movie flopped, apparently, and it's like, stop, stop pretending that he's, like, he's the next Star Wars, or the next Marvel, or anything like i guess he inspired tomb raider and maybe he inspired uncharted but i'm glad we got tomb raider and uncharted instead because nah he's not that guy so in any case uh we have Todd howard over here saying that it's his game or he pitched the game or whatever an interesting thing todd howard says and then we have these again what is this is this meant to be like graphically good? Like, is that why we're zooming in? Am I meant to be impressed? You know, with this? Again, it looks like a weird thing. It's like a weird uncanny valley between PS3 and PS4. Sometimes at its best, it looks like early PS4 graphics days. And then at its worst, it looks like late PS3 generation games. 
and really it's just it's just not good like the visual presentation i'm gonna call this one a four out of ten um again it feels like baby's first uncharted that's basically what it feels like and you know this is what xbox loves to do they like to glorify the developers they like to glorify todd howard and everything and it's like what has he done nothing nothing important so you know okay yeah yes i know he's actually done something but what i mean is that he has no cachet with me you know this like this part yeah this part looks like early ps4 games you know so it's like i guess that's kind of good and uh, this is good for xbox so you know it is what it is now what i will say is this i want to stress this out i think that indiana jones will be a much better game than what it showed us here i really do i think that this game can hit an eight out of ten maybe even a nine depending on how good the gameplay is okay now i'm sorry we have to go back to that so that you guys can see what I mean by PS3 level graphics. Look at this shit. What is that? What is that character model? Oh, again, this could just be an early in production moment in the game and they put it in the trailer. I do not have an issue with that. But when you look at this character model, you cannot tell me that this is even PS4 level of graphics. Because again, PS4 levels of graphics includes The Last of Us, includes Horizon, includes god of war 2018 includes spider-man so includes detroit become human you know like i'm sorry mm, oh it includes uncharted 4 so we just we just cannot call this ps4 level graphics this is definitely ps3 mid-gen ps3 or high res late gen ps3 if you are being generous at best okay but in any case we're not here for the graphics we're here for the gameplay and most of it looks kind of trash especially the whip the whip looks like the worst thing like if you take a look at the animations for the whip they are so stilted like over here look at this look at this moment we're just going to go frame by frame here so you can see that none of it is actually true and dynamic it just snaps to an object um and it's just it's just not it's just not convincing there's nothing good about this there's nothing natural about that flow it's just awful um so yeah if you peeped that you peeped it if you didn't peep it it's fine maybe they'll improve it by the time that we get to where we need to get to but yeah aside from that in terms of am i looking forward to this game no um if i wanted to play discount uncharted um i guess i will play tomb raider uh but yeah if i wanted to play discount tomb raider then i guess i will play this and since i don't like playing discount games i'm not gonna play either of those i guess um i mean they could come over new tomb, tomb raider and that could be interesting but aside from that this whip gameplay is completely unconvincing uh the character models are unconvincing mm. i said it could be an 8 out of 10 but that is really me being hopeful like that requires <laughs> that is a lot of hope uh being put into that uh, oh yeah and, oh in this moment okay guys uncharted has <laughs> Uncharted has terrific cutscenes and moments that are just out of this world crazy. But the amount of physics you have to ignore to believe that this is possible right there, where you are on top of the wing of a plane and you think to yourself that you're not going to be flying off that wing, going backwards while the plane keeps going forward, you have to be crazy. They looked at Uncharted and they were like, hmm, there is a level where this guy falls from a plane and it's amazing. So you know what we're going to have? We're going to have a guy run along the wing of a plane. And I'm sorry that I cannot go to that level of like disbelief. I, I, I can't. I can't. The entire point of the, the whole Uncharted with Nathan Drake falling out of the plane sequence is that it was over the top. It was chaotic. And you never truly, you could never truly find a reference to ground yourself as to the whole physics of the whole thing that, that was the thing it, you were just it was just a rough and tumble that you couldn't see how unrealistic that is because you're not pulled back watching it but the guy running along the wing of a plane i'm sorry like um, like drag <laughs> what what does he have magnetic boots like no no that no no way too much suspension of disbelief i said nope to that and yeah it, it just feels like you try to make the airplane scene or the train scene or they're being dragged, uh, you know, behind the truck scene from Uncharted, and you just made a really, really bad version of it because you didn't really understand um, how faithful they were to, like, enough... They, they were grounded enough 
while being just fantastical enough to make that work in Uncharted, and you just did not get that balance right. So in any case, uh, Baby's First Uncharted looks like PS3 level graphics for the most part. I really don't like this woman. Um, nothing wrong with her. I just didn't like her interruptions. I didn't like what she was wearing. She, her whole thing felt stilted. Again, I don't have an issue with actual developers. Uh, oh, uh, this thing goes um, third person. That's another thing. This should have been a third person camera. Mm. It, sh it should definitely have been third person. This game looks a lot better in cutscenes and it looks a lot better in third person mode. So, yeah. So in any case, that was overall the developer direct. So I don't know if I said it, but I think the show overall, six out of 10, there were great moments in there, definitely. Um, you know, you have our history untold, which inspired me. Hellblade 2 inspired me. Um, you have um, you have moments where you can see that the games are most likely better than what they showed us. And, and we kind of have to acknowledge that. Oftentimes, these are older builds, you know, there's going to be more polish, there's going to be more presentation, there's going to be more attention to detail put into every single scene in the final months of production. So, great, we have to account for that. Uh, but, too many interruptions by the developers, too many slow walking through the office, walking through the streets and everything. Just cut some of that out. Have one figure, just one, maybe two, but ideally just one. Come at the beginning, give a 30 second lead into the game, you know, kind of shows the face, yes, behind the devs, you know, and then maybe at the end have like, hey, this is the dev team and they can be like, bye to the camera. Great. We can see a little bit of humanity behind the projects that we are going to enjoy. And then do 15 minutes with each studio, okay, and put that on YouTube. And then those guys, you know, the, the sound designers, the audio designer, the mocap artists, you know, the producers, the directors, the creative leads, they can have a moment where they're on a couch or maybe this one-on-one -on -one interviews and they are presenting us the game in more details, going through the trailer with us, telling us about some of the audio technology, some of the visual technology, some of the gameplay aspects that they've tried to do and everything. I think that would be just such a much better format so that you will have the main presentation of developers direct and then you have developers directly answering and talking to you and talking about the projects afterwards that you can go separate look into. So for example, if you really want to know about how they captured, you know, Iceland and everything in Hellblade, you will have that available to you as a separate video, not mixed in and interwoven with this particular trailer. So that's my feedback. Uh, I think that Xbox has room to, again, make this a really great format. I think that if you were to nail this format and do sort of what I suggest you do, you could make this the best format out of all the presentations, you know, out of the Nintendo Direct, the PlayStation State of Play, and then the Developers Direct, I think it could be the one that stands out the most as being the most enjoyable. They just have to let the developers have their own time to shine in a separate video because interweaving them just is it's not a mix that I think you should ever even try to get right. So those are my thoughts on it. You know, what are your thoughts? I'm going to, I pay attention to the comment section, write something or, or respond somehow on Twitter. I don't know. Do what you need to do. Have a good day doing it. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, talk next time.